Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin here just before the daily candle close in around about 30, no, 45 minutes, no, 50 minutes. Yeah, roughly the daily candle will close. We want to talk about the structure that started here back end of November and is still working. Yeah, possibly working out to the upside here. But before we dive deeper into the analysis, first a few words about the sponsor of today's Bitcoin video, Chart Prime. Chart Prime is a service that provides specific trading view indicators. There are five specific and unique indicators that you can only get through Chart Prime if you sign up to one of their plans. These are based on quite complex algorithms and formulas and can be helpful in identifying trade setups, which means they can provide additional signals that could support your trading. Indicators can, for example, also be useful to support Elliott Wave counts to give more confidence. Of course, you don't need to apply Elliott Wave to use Chart Prime, and the combination of their indicators alone can provide trade setups and signals as well. They currently offer a 30% limited time discount, so if you are interested in this, check it out. Of course, bear in mind that no indicator works 100% of the time. Here's an example of the Bitcoin chart with one of the range indicators. This indicator combines various indicators in itself so you can adjust it um, to your needs, but it basically shows your range resistances, different support resistance levels based on different time frames, and it categorizes them based on their relevance. And this indicator provides you with dynamic support and resistance bands to which the price is reacting. And if you're interested in checking it out, make sure that you use the link in the video description and on their website. You can also read through testimonials and you can join their Discord community, which you can join in case you have any questions about how to use those indicators. So let's take a look at that. Um, the idea here remains that this is a five wave move. It is certainly an impulse. It's a very nice impulse. It looks good. Yeah, it looks impulsive. The only flaw we have here a little bit is that at the top here, this last wave, which peaked, if I zoom out, at the August highs, yeah, which was here around 25,220. Um, when we peaked here, this was a little bit too short for the ideal fifth wave. So again, this move, it is very, very important that you understand that. This move, wave one into December, wave two, very nice wave three, an extended one, a wave four, quite sharp actually in this case, but again, you know, it doesn't need to necessarily be shallow. It reached though the, the, the correct FIB level, so that's all fine. Um, and then here a wave five to the upside. And this wave five, ideally it should have pushed a little higher. Yeah, normally Bitcoin likes to push a little higher in a fifth wave. If I look at the Fibonacci targets, you can um, use here the wave one and we add the length of the wave one to the low of the fourth wave, you tend to see Bitcoin reach the 1.618 extension of wave one in a fifth wave. And it didn't reach that. It reached though minimum expectations for a fifth wave, but it, it failed to reach the 26K target, which was my ideal target here. And you know, I'm, I'm watching these tiny bits. Um, they can create a flaw and make me consider other options, right? And uh, that was one uh, thing. And also here, if I'm highlighting another way of calculating the length of the fifth, wa fifth wave is to take the length one to three or beginning of one to three. And here we reached the very first target, the 38.2 FIB level at 24,670. Went a little bit above that, but basically failed there. Um, also here, based on this measurement, the next target would have been 26,745. So had it reached at least 26K, you know, I would have been happy, but it didn't. So what does that leave us? It leaves us with the question if this fifth wave was finished or not. It had little structure, this fifth wave, especially if you compare it to the first. Um, so the potential exists that this was only the first wave of this fifth wave. Yeah, crypto sometimes like to extend in a fifth wave. However, Elliott Wave rules and guidelines, or actually the guidelines, they teach us that if the third wave is extended, the fifth wave doesn't normally extend too much. Now again, a lot of the Elliott Wave literature is, is was written before crypto were started, uh, but again, 
you know, then again, it should be universally applicable because it's all based on human sentiment. Um, but nevertheless, you, you tend to see cryptos, which are more like a risk asset and a very volatile asset. You tend to see fifth wave, uh, five wave, no, you, you tend to see extensions of the fifth wave. Okay, so therefore, this is the primary expectation because we didn't reach the minimum target, at least not my personal minimum target. And because it's an unusually short wave five for Bitcoin. And um, also because the move up was impulsive, the move down currently to me looks corrective, but it's borderline. So probabilities are close together here. But uh, yeah, if that's the case, the weekend low. So if we want to see these, this extension, then Bitcoin really needs to hold the weekend low. And that weekend low was, by the way, we disregard that long wick that was only on Coinbase. But um, here the weekend low was um, at 22,755, or am I wrong now? One second. Uh, let me actually quickly check Binance. Yeah, no, we disregard that long wick to the downside. So, um, by the way, some people ask why I'm not using the Binance chart. Well, the Binance chart played up a little bit and the actual price on TradingView Binance is different to the actual Binance price. So I'm using the Coinbase chart, which is more accurate. Um, yeah, the weekend low was 22,725. We really need to hold that level. If we break below that level, what happens? So if we break below this level, then my view is that we are heading down into this support area between 21,536 and 17,567. We will be able to specify that further and give you a more narrow support area also for the subway structures as we have a better understanding of the actual structure which is running here to the downside i mean it is certainly it is certainly a possibility that we are heading down here already in some kind of an um so th that would be the alternative yeah i mean structurally you could say we're heading down here in um, possibly here an A wave, this is a B wave, and we would then rally down in the C wave that might again form a larger A wave and so on. But that's at the moment not my, at least not the primary expectation, even though I have to say we, get, we have to allow for further downside. It's not primary. Primary is that we push higher as long as we're holding, first of all, today's low and then the weekend low. But I'm not going to sugarcoat anything here. So if we drop below the weekend low, um, we are heading into the um, larger retracement area down there, which is basically the idea that, uh, or which basically is based on the idea that then the five wave move was finished, yeah, um, which is of course a possibility, yeah, and you know we fulfilled our minimum requirements, so we need to allow for that option, and we would then break down and head into this area in which we will test and get clarification if the bear market already ended in November, because if this support area is holding then it is very likely that we're heading to 50k plus maybe even give it another go at the 100k area yeah but this this doesn't necessarily mean we head to 100k but it means we are probably setting up for an, an the next wave to the upside into the 40 to 50k region because again all of that could just be a larger abc but it's way too early to talk about that okay but this certainly would make me say okay the bear market low was most likely in Okay, so let's zoom into the detail here. And um, yeah, I mean, today this support area did hold so far. Bitcoin came down in what I believe is a WXY corrective structure. Remember what I said in the earlier video, we were down here at the 78.6 and I said, it's an ideal time to turn around. And even if this doesn't follow through, because there's no guarantee it will, actually it's quite weak what's currently happening. But even if it doesn't follow through, at least you, you normally do see a reaction at the 61.8 or the 78.6 Fibonacci retracement level. But yeah, it now needs to break first of all above the wave X high at 23.8K. And then more importantly, if it breaks above 24K, then at least we have um, a good view that this third wave to the upside has possibly finally started. Um, and we would then rally higher to 26 to 29k plus, but we will be able to specify that further as we go. Um, so yeah, it, it currently 
signals the onset of the third wave, but it's way too early to confirm that this can still easily break down and the comments I just made about the about these support areas is still valid. Today's low was at 23,190. And if we drop below that, then we are probably going to test the weekend lows. And if we lose those lows, then we are probably heading down into that support area and the, into that alternative. Now, um, here you can see also in orange, what I mean with this sort of bearish count where we say, okay, maybe we came down here in an A wave. This here is an A, B, C and B. Uh, could also still push a little higher before we then come down. So probabilities are close together. That's why my support area is orange to highlight the risk. Um, but still it is expected upside as long as we're holding today's low and the support area. However, if we rally, the, we are heading straight into the resistance. This is the resistance for the bearish count, ABC. Yeah, Goes all the way up to the 78.6 Fibonacci retracement, uh, which goes all the way up to 24.7K basically. So only really if we go above that level, then we can um, exclude the idea that this is just a corrective B wave, uh, or at least it will become much less likely. So in the end, not much changed from the previous video. We can focus on higher still. Bitcoin showed a lot of weakness this week. Um, buying pressure isn't really there. Ethereum showed much stronger, and I did highlight that also in the basically the daily market updates that are published on Telegram and Discord, that Ethereum, if I, if I had to choose between these two coins, which of them did bottom, on the last, uh, I think it was last Saturday or Sunday, then I would choose Ethereum because it has been far more impulsive on the waves to the upside that we have seen this week compared to Bitcoin. And it did hold also the Fibonacci support levels much better. I think Bitcoin always retraced down to the 78.6 FIB like today as well, whereas Ethereum only retraced to the 61.8, which is a little bit more bullish, yeah. Um, but um, either way, you know, this can easily be a corrective pattern to the upside here this year and, and as i said i'm not going to sugarcoat anything be prepared for downside it is what it is probabilities are sometimes very close together especially when you look here at the micro count especially when we look at corrective price patterns like these ones and uh, yeah we just need to need to be a little bit flexible now that we have reached a point where this abc pattern could actually be finished and we need to be ready for a move down that is why again that support area is actually orange and not yellow or green, which would be a little bit more, uh, should, should, you know, would show a little bit more confidence. Yeah, that's sort of where we are currently here with Bitcoin. Hope that gave you a good medium term and short term update. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.